are back on my computer now. And as you can see, I have the complete trade statement from this entire transaction. I blocked out the transaction numbers. I think that's important. And then I blocked out some of the other trades that I had made just because I want to keep this all relative to RSCF, Reflect Scientific. And um, it's clear that it was a pump and dump without a doubt. But I pulled up Yahoo Finance to show you the chart. The blue arrows are going to represent all of my buys and the red arrows are going to represent all of my sells. And if you are a, I don't even know, a junior in high school with some inkling of finance, you could tell that I absolutely got screwed on this trade. But it's all my fault. I'm not complaining about it. I'm not upset. I'm not done trading. I'm not a shitty trader by any means. But I want to explain how my real estate career resulted in me losing out on selling right at the top up here or somewhere in the upper two to low $3 range. So let's jump into it. The date was December uh, 13th, I believe. What does it say over here? December 11th. And it was about December 10th when I realized what was going on with this stock. I was just wrapping up Tim Sykes' 30-day blueprint, which actually gave me a crazy good framework on how I can recognize this within his trading framework and everything. And it actually is very useful. And for everyone out there wondering if it's a scam or if it's worth it or everything, it absolutely is. It's not a scam. It's 80 bucks. Go spend the money, you cheap fuck, and go learn how to trade because it's absolutely worth it. It's better than watching a bunch of YouTube videos that are out there for free. And if that upsets you, then go ahead and watch every single video. Try to sift through them all and not have a concise format. So anyways, that's my little spiel on that. I was headed to a listing appointment because I'm a real estate agent and I sell property. So my clients had reached out to me to sell their house for them. And I was going to come out on the 11th, which was the uh, exact day that I entered into this trade. And I was driving out there, bought in. I, as you can see right over here, I got executed at the $2 mark. And then I bought another 400 shares at the $2.22 mark once I realized that it was uh, going to close at the high. So, and this was on a Friday, I believe. Then this candle right here is a Monday. Um, either way, I was... Going out, I had the tra trades get executed coming into the uh, gr first green day on, or second, third green day on Friday. And as you can see on this Monday, which is the next trading day, it had an awesome morning gap up. Huge spike. I think they had positive news down here. Obviously, the volume looks good. There was a lot of volume going on, a lot of trading going on here. They had a lot of PR going on. They had announced that they had a contract or potential contract with Operation Warp Speed around the vaccine distribution. So this was going to be huge because they offered uh, cold storage that did not require, um, was it not liquid? They used liquid nitrogen, but it didn't require dry ice. That's what it was. So awesome product, or at least so I thought. And their stock was just, you know, absolutely exploding, as you can see right here. So I specifically remember I was on Highway 54 in Florida, headed to Land of Lakes, Lando Lakes, to list this property. And I realized it was right here at the $3 mark. So basically the peak of the, uh, of the gap up. And I was like, you know what? It looks like it'll be, you know, a fourth green day or so. I think we're, we're going to go long into this. I'll just wait. In hindsight, 2020, looking at the remainder of the chart, we had two huge death candles. And uh, you know what that means. The rest is history. I lost my shirt on it. But note to self and what I learned from this is, you know, with OTC stocks, you absolutely cannot take your time. You have to watch the chart religiously and get out when you have, you know, when you've had your, your gains realized, I guess you could say, or you're comfortable exiting the trade. Um, I thought it was going to go long. We were going to go longer on this and realize much more than the $800 gain that I had seen up to this point when I was checking my Thinkorswim on my mobile app. Just before I walked into the appointment, it was up to about 80, uh, it was about to about $800 or so. And that is where, you know, I was like, okay, I think, I think this is going to go long. We're going to ride this out, have a nice payday and it'll be a great trade. Unfortunately, not the case. So let's go into the downward spiral of this. After I already got the listing agreement signed and I was trying to ride this out for more profit, hope for a bounce because I thought we were going to see that right around here with this green candle. We're going to see another bounce on the way up. So as we were having our big sell-off here and it was getting shorted like crazy, 
I bought in right around here, which is the dollar, let's see, about the dollar 60 mark. And I was like, okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna see something here. Over the next couple of days, no such dice. I mean, it just got pounded right down into the dollar eight range, and that's and then the dollar six range. And that's just where I sold off a majority of it. I was like, this is this is just madness. Um, and then right about here, I bought in, thinking we're gonna see a little bit of a better bounce because we saw the volume come back up. And no such luck there either, just got absolutely hammered. Wrote it out, wrote it out. At this point, I had already lost so much money between you know the beginning of the year and March, which is when I just sold. I sold off everything in March for 23 cents. So I got absolutely hammered. Um, it's you know it is what it is at this point. I'm not upset by it by any means because I only risked what I was comfortable losing. That is the big thing for me that I don't think a lot of people understand, especially new traders. I myself am a new trader, as you can see by this chart and my executions. By no means am I perfect. So don't think I'm trying to talk that way. This is more of a document for me, I guess you could say, and I hope you guys can learn something from this too. The main takeaway that I wanna to portray to you guys is that when you buy in, and you're, as you can see, I was late on the run here, super late, although experienced some gains up into the top of this candle, up into the 325 range, I was still late. So get out when you can. When you realize the gains, take that, you know, take that profit and run. I wish I had, but hey, that's work got into the way of things. That's not an excuse. I could have ab executed the trade at a stoplight or when I got to the uh, got to the property, just get on out and take my profits walking in. But I got greedy. I thought it was gonna go long. That's on me, right? That's what, something I gotta learn from. So I wanted to share this with you guys so you can learn from the same. And of course, with these OTC stocks, if you plan on doing it part-time, you might just end up getting burned like I did because you know, these moves happen within minutes or hours. I mean, potentially seconds, I guess, if you want to get down to it. But I was long biased, got burned, and it is what it is. Now I know in my mind and in my framework what I need going forward that we can absolutely be a little bit more tighter, watch things closely. And I was still within my risk, which is great, but it is what it is, guys. That's the OTC market. So, um, you know, comment down below with your thoughts, your tips, your tricks, what's helped you. Um, because I think that'll be beneficial for a lot of people. This is my very first trade recap. I expect <laughs> recap. This was a recap based on this trade, but my very first recap guys, um, drop some comments down below, please like, and subscribe as well. We're almost at 200 subscribers, which is crazy. Um, so hopefully you guys like this content and I can bring a little bit more of this to you guys going forward. Um, comment down below with any questions or tips or tricks of what you've learned from or what's helped you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.